Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ariel. I'm a zero-based budgeter and I use the cash envelope system. On this channel, I'm sharing my journey to becoming debt-free, how we budget both a salary and a server income along with what we're learning along the way. If any of that interests you, feel free to subscribe and let's get into the video. I am so excited about this video. <laughs> if you haven't noticed from the title, it is a Q&A. And I've never done a Q&A before, so I'm very, very excited about this. I asked you guys this past week to submit some questions for a Q&A, and then I also went ahead and pulled some questions on my comments on Instagram and maybe on YouTube that I've gotten over last month. So I think this will be a very good video. I'm actually quite excited about it. There were some really good questions that you guys sent to me along with like just questions you guys have asked me along the way. So I'm here for it and let's just dive right into it. So this one's a very good introduction one. So what made you start cash stuffing? So I've shared my journey a little bit with cash stuffing um, with my debt confession and just along the way of like my cash envelope stuffing videos. Um, I've tried different ways. I, I've tried um, doing it just with card, but using different applications. I've used things like Mint, where it takes your transactions and categorizes them for you. Um, and the issue is that when it comes to me and using a card, like it's not something that you hold. And so in my head, like I'm just like, I've got the money, like I know I've got the money. And then I start swiping my card and I'm not looking at what I'm spending or where I'm spending. Even like when I've tried to use apps like Mint, like it's like I'll get it down for like a week or two and then after that, I'll just go back to bad habits. Um, so I'll keep on swiping, feel good about how much I think I have in my account and then I start to get nervous, like anxiety filled about checking my bank account um, even to see where I'm at money wise and I won't. I'll keep on swiping until my card somewhere declines. And then it's like, okay, I've got no more money. Or I get a text from my bank saying that I'm in the red. So it's like, okay, cool. And I just cannot get down something um, that like I can't hold. My journey with cash stuffing was I started it in 2019 after my roommate, um, shared Dave Ramsey with me um, for some reason. I just, I understood the concept really well about cash stuffing. And so I went ahead and rolled with it for a while. And then 2020 hit. So there was the coin shortage and everything like that. So like a lot of places weren't taking card in, or cash anymore. So I had to go back to using card. All of my bad habits just flourished back. Like again, I tried using apps like Mint or like even I like I used Dave Ramsey's free app as well to help track it online electronically. I've even tried like with card um, tracking it manually, like just on paper. And it just wasn't like, it just never worked for me. In 2022, I started following Plan Budget Dream just randomly on my personal account. I don't think I'd seen any budgeters on my personal account until I ran into her account, immediately followed her because her aesthetic is everything. Um, and she just, I don't know, her videos really, really encouraged me, even reminded me that uh, cash budgeting was like a thing. I went ahead and bought a little binder system. I even had an old one from 2019 that I got. And so I just started kind of, started with the basics of like groceries, gas, eating out, fun, and then started incorporating more sinking funds, and then really started lately tackling my debt. And like this system is the best system that's worked for me. And that is this, the one thing I will keep on reiterating is that it's the system that's worked for me. When it comes to budgeting and personal finance, like please, 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 find the system that works for you. Cash envelope stuffing will not work for everyone and that's okay, I'm not here to be like, you have to do it, it's the one thing that works. No, 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 no. There's so many ways to budget. This is just what works for me and so this is what I'm sharing is what's working for me because this is my journey and so if that encourages you to try it, then try it. Ask me any questions that you have with it um, because it, it does work. It, 
it works. Some people, like they're perfectly fine with using card and that's what works for them. Fantastic, fantastic, I love that. And I hope someday I can actually just get to the point of using card and knowing that I won't recreate those bad habits. But for right now, cash envelope stuffing is definitely where my good habits are and that's what I'm gonna keep on using until I get to that point. Um, Cause ideally I would like to get to the point of like being debt free and using, using my credit cards to the actual, their like abilities in like a good way. <laughs> Not where it's hurting me, but where it's helping me. So that is my ideal goal um, after like I become debt free and stuff like that. Um, on to the next question. If you could have unlimited budget for one category, what would it be? I love this question. And immediately I'm gonna say traveling. Traveling is one of my passions. I love, love, love traveling. I wish I could do it more. Like I love going outside of the country and going to go visit other cultures and like things like that. So, so far, um, the only time I've been out of the country outside of going to Cancun one time just for fun um, was uh, two different mission trips. One of them was going to Argentina, which was really awesome. I love the community there, like their community, like even strangers, it's like family. Um, so I definitely loved my time in Argentina. And then I went to Moldova and Ukraine and both of those, again, like it was such a different culture, but like it was so fun to experience and their food in Moldova and Ukraine is amazing. So I, out of my mission trips, like they've been really, really fun. And I definitely, like I said, enjoy traveling. I travel around the US quite a bit. We usually go, I want to say two or three times out of state within the year. So I definitely, again, love traveling. We've, me and my boyfriend have been talking about saving up for 2025 going to Japan. So, and that's, that's like a real thing too. I even bought a little backer card from Minimalistic Budgets for Japan. And so I'm so excited to start using that. But tackling credit card debt right now. So um, that is what I would love to have unlimited budget in my category is travel. Oh my God, I would use it all the time. I, I don't even think I would own a home because I would just be traveling everywhere. Like the entire world would be my home. It'd be fine. <laughs> um, so actually, what would be your unlimited category? I think that's just such a fun question. So like if you could pick any category of budgeting, what would it be that you would have unlimited? Like, is it groceries to buy all the groceries that you want without fear of like going over budget? Gas, because gas is stupid expensive. Um, like what what category would it be for you guys? So the next question I love, um, the first time I asked on my stories for questions, because I asked two different times on my stories on Instagram. The first time I asked on my stories on Instagram, um, I shared a picture of my cat. I wasn't feeling very pretty that day. So I was like, you know who's looking pretty? My cat is. So I got the wonderful question of oh, what is our cat's name? Um, his name is Sora from the video game Kingdom Hearts. Um, I am obsessed with that video game. My boyfriend, not as much, but, um, I just thought it was a really cool name. I mean, I think in Japanese it means sky. Um, so I just thought it was really pretty. Plus he loves jumping in the air and stuff like that. He's such a funny cat. I love him so much. So the next question was, what was your biggest gotcha moment when it came to your finances? Um, it was my boyfriend losing his job. And that's what actually got me to start, um, going back to cash budgeting and stuff like that. So this past year, my boyfriend, he lost his job. It was weird timing. So the time that he lost his job was the same exact time that we were supposed to tell our apartment complex if we were gonna stay for another year or leaving. And so like literally within a matter of days, he lost his job. We had to figure out what we were doing and then let our apartment complex know. It was such a rushed moment. And so we ended up leaving our apartment complex to go ahead and moving it to my parents' house. And so I guess the gotcha moment was when he lost his job and we had to move here. I was so mad that I had the income to be able to support us for a little bit. Um, I think for a little bit, probably could have just fully supported us if if we wanted to, but obviously like, I just kind of want him to have a job. He, he wants to have a job too. But I had the income to support us in, a, in this kind of, um, emergency time, but because of my debt to income ratio, I couldn't do it. And that bugged me so much because it got me thinking like, what if we have kids? Like, you know, what if we were just in a different situation? Like 
what if I didn't have the debt to income ratio that I have? Like, what if I didn't have that debt? I could let us survive here for a little bit longer and not take the risk of moving with my parents and like all the expenses that came with that because that was, that was expensive. I'd never moved before the way that we did. <laughs> I always asked people for help, but we actually got movers this time. And so I think that was the biggest, definitely the biggest gotcha moment was knowing I had the income to support us, but I didn't have debt to income ratio to support us. So that just, it got to me so much. And I just thought it was silly because the previous expenses that are causing me to have to pay so much debt, they just weren't worth the debt. You know, like that's kind of the frustrating thing about debt. You start thinking back on your expenses and you're like, you know what? That throw pillow was actually not worth the amount of debt I have now. I just never want to be in that situation again. I want to be able to know that like if my boyfriend or I were to lose our job, like it would be fine. We would, we would still be okay. And so I want to have the emergency funds that would come with that. I want to not have the debt that you have to allocate hundreds of dollars for a month. You know, I just, I want to be more prepared. So that was a really rough moment for me, especially because I always felt like I was the responsible kid out of four children. Um, and so knowing that I couldn't take care of myself in the moment, I couldn't take care of my family, like me, my boyfriend and my cat, like, I couldn't hold down the fort while my boyfriend was looking for something new. And you know what? It's all about God's timing. Like we go through phases of life and I actually have been very grateful for us moving in here because it's allowed opportunity for both me and my boyfriend. We do hope to move out. It won't be this year. We're talking about looking at possibly fall or uh, winter of next year. Okay, this one was interesting because I never thought of it. And so I'm like, the fact that someone thought of this, I'm like, I just never did. So they asked, when making your budget, do you add one to two extra dollars to include sales tax? I never thought about like, okay, I thought about tax, but like not tackling on like an extra couple dollars for taxes in each category so like obviously if somebody is asking me this like i wonder if other people are wondering this too no well no i don't tackle on a couple dollars to include sales tax it's just all within it if i'm going grocery shopping and our budget i put 75 dollars and my boyfriend puts in 75 dollars for a budget each week so each week for grocery shopping it's usually 150 dollars unless we have a little extra rollover which lately we have been um which has been super nice no i just i just stop once it starts getting close so if our budget is 150 dollars i normally stop when it's 135 and like i i keep my cal like a calculator going while i'm putting things in my cart i know other people will go ahead and like put things in like the store card or something online before going so they know the exact amount or even writing out the number so they know the exact amount that's so much time <laughs> that I don't want to spend um, for me personally. Again, if it works for others, it works for others and that's wonderful. Um, I just, I don't want to spend that time doing that. So I go ahead and I just walk around and you know, I don't buy, like I, I buy a lot of the same things anyways. So it's not like I kind of understand what our budget is or like what things are going to cost. But yeah, I just go around with a calculator and start adding things up. So that's how I do it. And then I just, I stop when I feel like, you know, it's getting close to it. I'm going to stop here, you know, and then just uh, decide what's actually needed versus wanted. And then just kind of go from there if we're over budget. This next question is talking about when I have a uh, rollover money or like leftover money in my envelope. So somebody said, where do you allocate the remaining funds? Savings. I always throw my remaining funds for uh, funds towards debt and nothing towards savings. With Dave Ramsey, I liked his program at first, but when he kind of said stop saving and only only pay off debt, that was kind of a red flag for me because a thousand dollars, which is his baby step one, is saving a thousand dollars emergency fund, which please save an emergency fund. Please do. But a thousand dollars isn't going to cover a lot, um, especially when you're talking about emergencies. So like if your car is suddenly broken, I've had, you know, people like I've had repairs upwards of $4,200. A thousand dollars is going to cover that. And I'm not trying to use my credit card to cover it either. But whenever I went ahead and started paying off debt, I did not stop adding to my savings. So if you're putting everything towards debt, please at least like just do something small, even if it's like $20, $25, or even $5 like a month, or even like dollar bills that you get through different transactions, like do something to add to your savings. Because yes, while your priority might be paying off debt, my priority is paying off debt right now. Like I've cut so many funds, so many extra fluff here and there. Like my sinking funds went from $1,400 a month to it's around, 
I think it's under 700 now. So like I cut my sinking funds in half and the sinking funds are like a lot of like the different savings areas and stuff like that because I don't want to have to use my credit card. And so I set myself up with success by having sinking funds. So I don't have to use my credit card. So actually when it comes to cash, my leftovers, um, like, I said groceries gets rolled over, but like things like my gas, um, gas I normally have like about 40, 30 or $40 left. Um, and so, cause I have an economy car, it doesn't take a whole lot of gas and it doesn't use a whole lot of gas. And so I normally, like I said, have about four, 30 or $40 left. So like I'll do half of that to go to car maintenance. So like one of my sinking funds. So again, if there's ever a car emergency, I, I have something to be able to pull it from. Um, and then the other half will go to my 100 envelope challenge because that's one of my goals right now is to use the 100 envelope challenge to save up for a new bed because beds are expensive. I mean, if you're, it's all about your priority in this moment. So if your priority is debt, go ahead and put the rest of your money towards debt. And if you don't have an emergency fund at all yet, I would say actually make that your focus because it's, it's nice knowing that something's there because you have that cushion just in case something does happen. And again, you don't have to rely on your credit card. Do you and your boyfriend have separate finances? Um, yes, <laughs> we do. We do not have a joint account at all. We don't have anything that actually has both of our names on it. Um, a lot of people like to say because we live together that, um, what's the word? Common law marriage is like we're common law marriage. We're not actually because common law marriage, actually you have to have assets in um, each other's names as well. So like whether that's a bank account or like having a loan or like a mortgage in each other's name, like you have to have something in each other's name to actually have common law marriage. So right now we're just seen as roommates. Me and my boyfriend, we do have separate accounts. It honestly makes things uh, really easy, especially right now while he's a server and I'm paying off debts so that we don't just don't mix it up because he's also doing a lot of savings right now. So that was, that was the goal whenever we moved into my parents' house is that I was gonna pay off debt he was going to save a lot and all of that and so that's what we're working on right now so like all of my again extra money that I don't need for bills or my everyday living expenses like all of that just goes towards my debt where all of his where he can it'll all go towards savings it's kind of the system that we have right now I mean we've talked about obviously later in life when we're married and stuff having a joint account and stuff like that and what that would look like it's just something that like we've discussed but we haven't been able to go too hard into because I don't really know what that would necessarily look like so i'm not like one way or another on it i know like people have very strong opinions on it i'm just not really there yet <laughs> so um but we will figure it out when time comes so this next question is from one of my favorite people she said is carla your favorite irish creator honestly carla you're my only <laughs> irish creator i follow <laughs> so yes <laughs> i if you guys aren't following seriously carla she's amazing she's so freaking funny. She was talking about how she was on a hiking trail the other day, but like not near like, not like a hiking trail. Like it was a running trail, like in the woods. <laughs> and so she kept on referencing her feet as crab feet and all that because she was in so much pain. <laughs> <laughs> she's really funny. So go follow Seriously Carla because she's hilarious. So yes, Carla, you're my favorite Irish creator because I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm following any other ones uh, right now. So the last question I have uh, was in reference to my debt confession. It's a really interesting question. They asked me how I got a credit card because when they were 18 with a job, they couldn't get a credit card for three years. Again, go ahead and check out my debt confession for the entire detail. For me, the by the time I was looking at our credit card, I actually already had credit built. Um, I had my student loans, I had my car loan, and then I was also on um, my parents, one of my parents' credit cards. And I actually, now I'm thinking about it, I think by that time, that's when I had my two store credit cards. So, cause I have my Discover card, but I also have two, which they don't have a balance because I don't use them hardly at all. But I have a credit card with Victoria's Secret. And then I also have one with Discount Tire, which would affect that. I just can't remember if I got that before the Discover card or after. Basically my point is, is that I already had like some established credit whenever I actually went to apply for my credit card. So that's, that's why I had gotten approved for $9,000. For someone like my boyfriend, who he didn't have anything. He literally started with zero. So he doesn't have any student debt. He has a car loan, but he got that after 
he established his uh, credit with a credit card and he's got two credit cards right now. He had three, but he wasn't using it at all. So they canceled it. So he doesn't have much credit history for him. He started off with a secure credit card. So he paid, I think a $500 deposit. We like do this all around tax season. So he had an extra $500. So he went ahead and did a $500 deposit on a secure credit card. Once they saw that he was responsible enough with his credit card, they gave him his deposit back and they went ahead and changed the secure credit card into an actual credit card. So if you guys are starting from nothing, you've like done nothing with credit, um, a secure credit card is a great way to go. Um, because of his secure credit card, he was able to establish a line of credit. He got his credit up to a 700 score. And so because of that, whenever he had gotten into a car wreck, someone crashed into him, his car was totaled. So when it came to him getting a new car, he was actually approved for 3.2, which is pretty good. But his bank was doing something where it was 3.2, as long as you had um, a 700 plus credit score. And then also you didn't need a cosigner. So like where I needed a cosigner for my first car, he actually didn't. So that's, that's actually really cool. Um, and then we wanted to grow his lines of credit. He accidentally applied for a credit card. So that was the one that got canceled. And then, um, he has a, a synchrony credit card from when we got our furniture, um, one from our last apartment. So, um, so yeah, so for me, I already had an established credit whenever it came to applying for a credit card. But for him, he had to start out with a secure credit card. Um, my goal later in life is to kind of do what my parents did and be able to put my kids on my credit cards, knowing that I have good credit history and all of that. Um, to be able to help them with their credit score by the time they are old enough to go ahead and get a car and things. So yeah, that is the last of my questions. I hope that was maybe helpful and insightful. I don't know. I just know it was a lot of fun. Um, I actually really hope to do these again. So if you guys have more questions, feel free to throw them my way and I will be more than happy to answer them. I will go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Bye.